with colleague. So I'm sitting here in front of my uh, laptop with my new colleague, and I will transcribe the uh, recordings, and she will check whether the uh, transcription is correct or not. And then she will also uh, give me the uh, Russian translation, and that Russian translation will be further translated by me in English and Japanese. I have some uh, publications of my uh, of our work, which is called the Sound Materials of the Native Language. I have up to now uh, published seven uh, volumes of, my, of our, uh, this project, and this is a text of NIF uh, in the first line, and there is a word-to-word -word, uh, translation in English, so the reader can identify the meanings of the new words one by one. And on the right one, there's free translation in uh, Russian. And there's also a translation in English and Japanese. And uh, the most important thing is that there's also a CD. So you can listen to the CD and, and how the uh, live conversation has been uh, taking place in the text are circulated and you can have a I can base my, uh, because I'm a linguist, I'm doing, uh, I'm trying to retrieve linguistic information as much as possible from these uh, recordings. And my uh, linguistic analysis is based on this uh, text, the recording. So I use it as a sort of a linguistic corpus. I think I can. You can imagine a situation like this. This is on a, uh, taken on a different occasion, but this is the recording is from a, uh, such a session. So I uh, asked three speakers of NIF to say to speak to each other in NIF. And uh, yeah, maybe you can hear if you know uh, Russian. There is many Russian words, and sometimes they uh, uh, they say the whole sentence in Russian. Do they just use one? Yeah, it depends on some kind of topic. This one or 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 Maybe it's also interesting from a uh, social linguistic point of view, uh, when does this code switching from uh, Russian to NIF initiate? when uh, they go back from uh, Russian to uh, NIF. Okay, that was all for my uh, current project uh, with NIF people. Uh, now I have to uh, tell you something about the linguistic situation uh, in the north of Japan, especially the Ainu people. Um, Ainu people um, so are living on the island of Hokkaido mostly, but they are also living in uh, Tokyo, in Osaka, in all these uh, uh, great cities. Um, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing to say that uh, we don't know exactly how many uh, Ainu people are, because there is no census. Of course, there is a census of uh, Japanese, which is like every uh, five years, I guess. This was the year of the census. But there is no um, um, question which asks the nationality uh, whether you are Ainu. So you can't base the uh, number of 
find people on that census. What we know is that um, there is a questionnaire uh, held every uh, seven, eight years by the, by the government. And uh, from the uh, reactions to this questionnaire, we estimate that there are uh, about 25,000 people on Hokkaido. That's the minimum estimate. Um, so there should be more, because there are many Aino people who don't react on this questionnaire. And there are also many Aino people living in Tokyo and Osaka, more than 2,000 maybe. And they are not reacting to this uh, questionnaire by the Hokkaido uh, government, of course. So 25,000 is a minimum, you can say. The uh, number of speakers is also very difficult to identify. Um, yeah, maybe it's five, maybe it's ten, but it's also related to the uh, problem of how to uh, define a speaker. If you are, if you are, uh, are you a speaker? If you know a couple of words, or uh, if you can uh, say something fluent in Ainu, or if you can uh, tell a folk tale, then there's no uh, rigid uh, criterion. So. Uh, it's also related to the uh, matter of definition of speakers, but um, there is no um, yeah, linguist who is now doing field work with Aino people, so that says something about the uh, yeah, current quality of the uh, Aino speakers. So really, uh, yeah, qualified good speakers uh, who could work with their linguists uh, are no longer uh, alive, unfortunately. Aino is a language isolate. It has many dialects. Within Hokkaido, there are many dialects of Ainu. And uh, as you saw, uh, Kuril uh, Ainu is a distinct dialect. And Sakhalin Ainu is also a distinct dialect. But the Ainu language is itself a language isolate, like me. So, it is not uh, related to any other uh, language in the region. It's also very different from Japanese in every respect, in syntax, uh, in phonology, lexicon. So uh, the uh, the uh, Ainu syntax is, um, yeah, you can say that it's much more like English or uh, Dutch because it has a person marking for every verb, which uh, uh, Japanese uh, lacks, of course. And uh, phonology is also much more complex than uh, Japanese. The, the, the syllable structure, for instance, of Japanese is very simple. It's CV, it's basically CV or CVN. But in, in uh, Ainu, you have much more complex uh, uh, <coughs> syllable structures. You have many uh, CVC syllables as compared to uh, Japanese. But because Japanese and Ainu have been uh, living, uh, been neighbors for centuries, there is much uh, language contact, and the traits of language co contact you can see in uh, loan words. Ainu has many loan words from Japanese, many borrowings. Uh, most of them are names from of, uh, products like uh, kami, 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 it's kampi in Ainu, uh, shio, shippo in Ainu. And in this way, the Ainu borrowed many uh, uh, words uh, which were uh, such names of Japanese programs. Uh, the uh, uh, borrowings from the, uh, uh, the other direction are much fewer, so there are not so many uh, Ainu words uh, which borrowed the Japanese from the Ainu people. Uh, except for toponyms, place names. If you go to Hokkaido, you will immediately notice that many of the uh, place names in Hokkaido uh, differ significantly from the names in uh, other parts of Japan, like Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka. Um, many, many Japanese people have difficulty in remembering uh, Hokkaido uh, place names because um, it is not based on the Japanese language, like the capital, uh, Sapporo, Sapporo, Sapporo. So this uh, uh, name also stems from a uh, final expression, uh, Sapporo, that dry big uh, river. It's said that uh, more than 80% uh, of the uh, place names of Hokkaido uh, come from uh, the Ainu expressions. So how did, um, how come that uh, there are no, hardly any speakers of uh, Ainu left uh, if you now go to Hokkaido? There are still uh, at least 25,000 Ainu people living, but most of them speak uh, simply Japanese. Um, and, but that was not the situation uh, of, let's say, uh, 100 years ago. 100 years ago, 
or maybe 120 years ago, there were many, many Ainu people who uh, spoke fluently uh, Ainu. The assimilation to Japanese 